What's up, fantasy foosballers? This is uh, Tyler the Waver King Ward coming at you live from my garage on a Friday morning. <clears throat> and so the last uh, video we put out was a list of the top five stacks for receivers and quarterbacks. And that's something I really like to do in fantasy because hitting your opponent with an avalanche of points, um, you know, on a touchdown, a long touchdown, you get so many points from for the wide receiver and the quarterback at one time, it's just devastating. So there's a flip side to that, and that is the uh, running back quarterback stack. And so I like it when my opponents have that because I'm just watching, waiting, hoping the running back gets a carry and then the quarterback gets no points, you know? I mean, the running back still gets six points, but whatever, you're capping your upside when you do that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's potentially not as devastating to your team when you're going against that. So I was thinking about, um, there's got to be some exceptions to that, you know, like what are some good values at quarterback and running back that you can stack together on some high powered offenses, you know, fast pace of play that you could get away with stacking running backs and quarterbacks. So I made a list of that. And so uh, let's get into it. Number five, Josh Allen and James Cook. So Josh Allen, um, he's getting drafted like, you know, he's going to be doing, he's already done better than he did last year, which is kind of overvalued. But, you know, I mean, if you happen to get him, I would highly suggest grabbing Cook because he's a great value. He's going to be a PPR machine and um, you're going to get some, you know, devastating points maybe on, you're going to get a lot of uh, passing touchdowns from Josh Allen to James Cook, potentially five or six. That'd be amazing. So that could be a stack that wouldn't hurt you so bad. Number four, Tua Tungavaiola and Chase Edmonds. Both are great values. Tua's going on the 14th. I mean, uh, he's getting drafted as like quarterback 20, to late 20 something, and I think he's going to at least be top 15. And um, he's got the potential to get a lot of long touchdowns. I don't know if you're. Uh, league does you know long touchdown bonuses but if they do he's got Tyree Kill and James Waddle dude so <clears throat> he's got a lot of potential for extra bonus points and then uh Chase Edmonds he's getting drafted in the 12th right now he's listed as the number one starting running back for them and you know his backup is Raheem Mostert who is awesome but you know he's gonna be awesome one quarter a game for half the games so uh, Chase Edmonds is gonna have a huge opportunity and he's a pass catching running back too. So, you know, that's going to be that's two good values right there and you can stack those two if you have to. Probably stream Tua and have Edmonds on your team all the time, but if Tua works out, that'd be great. Number 3. Trevor Lawrence. Travis Etienne, especially for PPR cuz uh they may not have that many scoring scoring opportunities, but you know, Trevor Lawrence is going to rush and he's, it's going to carry him. It's going to buffer him from those bad weeks. You know, he's not going to have terrible weeks because he's going to be rushing as well, I think. And then uh, Travis Etienne, he's just going to be catching a lot. He might not have a ton of touchdowns, but he's going to be catching a ton of passes. So PPR, this stack is going to be a huge value, really. Because um, I really believe in Trevor Lawrence going on the 14th, which is, you know, last. And then uh, Travis Etienne, he's, he's climbing up draft boards because everybody's pushing him, but... Uh, I still like him where he's going. I mean, compared to some of the people he's going with, he's in the running back dead zone almost, and he's a running back I like, so it's not too bad. Number two, Trey Lance, Elijah Mitchell. Uh, Trey Lance, he's shooting up draft boards too. He was going 11th, now he's going in 10th. This is all ESPN, PPR, 10 teams, and I do like five mock drafts a day, so I just kind of look and see where they're going um, and what's rising and what's not. And uh, Trey Lance is going up, man. He's going up because that touchdown he threw, that was to that rookie for like 70 yards. But that's his potential, man. He's going to have long touchdowns. He's going to have rushing touchdowns. Elijah Mitchell's going in the sixth round, which is where he should be drafted right now because you don't know his health. I need him to get back into training camp if I'm going to draft him high. Because uh, Jamichael Hasty was in that last preseason game. That fool is super fast, man. And I think he's going to be taking a lot of third down work from um, Elijah Mitchell. I owned Elijah, I owned him Elijah Mitchell last year. I spent all my fab on him the first week. And uh, I really enjoyed having him. When he played, he gets like 20 points a game. It's amazing. 
So here we go. Number one. Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. <laughs> uh, so Rodgers, I mean, he's getting drafted. I like where he's getting drafted. He's getting drafted around Ryan, uh, Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford and all those kind of people. And he's getting drafted to, like, I think where he'll finish, you know. He'll be a top-five quarterback. He's getting drafted as a top-five quarterback. So if you want to take him, I'm not going to blame you. And then uh, Aaron Jones, he's been slipping. I've noticed he was going, like, you know, late first, high second. Now he's almost, now he's reaching the top of the third. So that's a good value. And, you know, we talk about pace of play, and I know, like, so, you know, the the Packers were 18th in offensive plays ran last year per game. And that's not great, but you know Aaron Rodgers is going to be top five quarterback, and you know that Aaron Jones is going to be super important to this offense. Losing Devontae um, Adams is going to be huge because uh, – he doesn't have any reliable receiver, receivers, and he really trusts Aaron Jones. So I can see him getting a lot, you know, a couple more catches a game at least. So that's going to be a bit nice stack, even though you're using a lot of draft capital on that. That's one that I don't really mind. Um, so I have some honorable mentions here. Just like, you know, if you get stuck with them, don't worry about it. Uh, Tom Brady, he's getting drafted where he should be drafted. And then uh, Fournette is scary. But, man... He was scary last year, and he caught a ton of passes, and he got a bunch of touchdowns. So, I mean, if that's a high-powered offense, it's fast pass, fast pass, fast pace of play. I think it's like top ten last year, and then uh, same thing with this uh, Kirk Cousins and James Cook or Dalvin Cook. So, I mean, if you get Dalvin Cook early, which is fine, that's a good pick. You got to really think about maybe getting Kirk Cousins later because they're going to have they've got the new offensive coordinator. They're going to be passing way more. There's a lot of potential for them to make a lot of points together. And Dalvin Cook can take one to the house anytime, so that's that long touchdown bonus that I was talking about earlier. Could be awesome. Um, Kyler Murray and James Conner, that's another super fast-paced, well, uh, you know, high-scoring offense. And uh, Kyler might, you know, has potential to vulture a couple of touchdowns from Conner, but Conner's also been catching a lot of passes, so it might offset each other a little bit. Uh, last honorable mention is going to be um, Herbert and Austin Eckler. Uh, Justin Herbert's getting drafted. I think he's a little bit overvalued. Um, but, you know, if you if, if Chargers are your team and you believe in Justin Herbert, I don't blame you for taking him. Then Austin Eckler, you know, he's a top three pick. And uh, But that is going to be such a high-powered offense. It's gonna You're going to be able to afford – and he's a pass-catching running back. So he, he's going to get you points together with Justin Herbert like half the time. You know, he's going to get a bunch of rushing touchdowns. It's going to take away from Justin Herbert and your team's potential for huge weeks, but I mean, it's it wouldn't be too terrible. I've got some uh, bad ones I wanted to point out just because, they're, you know, pace of play, low-scoring offenses. If uh, you get, you know, Taylor the first pick, which is amazing. I wish I was number one. I would take him. I wouldn't get Matt Ryan because uh, – I mean, I could just see them running goal line, goal line, goal line, and then Matt Ryan gets, you know, you're capping your upside with that because they're not going to have a super fast pace of play anyways. They're going to be running the ball so much. Same thing with uh, if you get if you get Joe Burrow, if you get Joe Mixon, I wouldn't get Joe Burrow either because uh, they were at the bottom of pace of play last year as well. They're 25th or 24th. I mean, the Colts were 21st, but they're getting a new quarterback, so that could change, but Matt Ryan's never been known to really go super fast unless it was Kyle Shanahan. In the last half of the Super Bowl, um, I have, uh, let's see, Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. I don't want any piece of the Giants, but uh, there's people that think that Daniel Jones is a good pick. And maybe, but I wouldn't pick Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones, even though he's a pass-catching running back. It's just, dude, the Giants aren't going to score that many points this year. So you don't want any two players from offense on a team that's not going to score that many points. Unless they're just vitally important, like Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. And then my last one is to avoid all New England players. I was like, oh, uh, God, dude, why can't I even think of the uh, quarterback there? But it doesn't really matter. Uh, but there's so much problems going on there, man. It's like, oh, yeah, I was thinking Ramondre Stevenson would be good with him. But uh, I just don't trust. I was really high on Ramondre Stevenson ever since James White retired. But now I just don't trust any of it because of their offensive coordinator situation. So anyways, um, I don't know if you noticed this uh, video was more stable, but I bought a tripod, and I'm going to try to edit this with iMovie, but I think I need to get a laptop and start editing these things with real music and stuff. 
already have the song picked out. Um, I just don't know how to get it on my stuff. <laughs> so anyways, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, you can like it in real life on your computer and uh, subscribe. So thank you so much. This was Tyler the Waver King Award. It's my list of uh, top five uh, quarterback running back stacks if you have to do it. I mean, I wouldn't really, I, I highly recommend the receiver one. Running backs kind of like if you have to. So anyways, thanks so much. Later.